Since everybody seemed to enjoy it last time, let's unbox some more G.I. Joe Classified series. It's Morphin' Time! Shout out to Infinity Wartorn for joining the channel memberships as a Sound Squadron captain. If you want to join channel members, there's lots of perks, starting as low as $1 a month. You can check out the details in the join button below. But now, on to the video. Hello, this is Sanat here, and I decided to hold off on opening any G.I. Joes and save them for a video because everybody really enjoyed my last unboxing, which was me just going over some G.I. Joe Classified that I'd gotten recently. And it was super fun. I had fun doing it. Everybody seemed to enjoy it, so let's do another round. Uh, this isn't everything that's come in since the last one because they've been flooding us with uh, Classified, which is great for us, terrible for our wallets. And then we'll have probably another one before the end of the year because there is still more to come. So let's take a look at these G.I. Joe figures. All right, let's start with the G.I. Joe Steel Core Troopers because I think they're the most generic, uh, which is their whole purpose. They are supposed to be your generic grunt uh, G.I. Joe force because we do get a lot of Cobra grunts, but we don't really get Joe grunts. These are the Steel Core. As you can see, they come with jetpacks, so it kind of re it reminisces of the G.I. Joe, the movie opening at the Statue of Liberty. They come with just an absolute load of stuff, so we're going to have to like figure out how they got everything, but they should. You know, G.I. Joe's pretty good at that. Um, I do like the box art. Uh, it's kind of sad, though, because I have talked about how much I have enjoyed the uh, G.I. Joe plastic-free packaging, and I thought, well, maybe they'll keep it since it's not, like, a super, uh, you know, casual uh, line. You know, it's not, like, Marvel or DC or something. Um, but sadly, they are are doing away with this. We are going back to the plastic windows, which, look, when G.I. Joe is packed this well, you know, why, why do we need to go back to the plastic windows? I would have taken, like, oh, plastic window over this part and then still keep the little accessory boxes, but doesn't seem to be the case on the new ones, which is a bummer because I like those. Um, also a bummer, I noticed that they got less uh, sustainable. This happened with Transformers where they switched from the nice cardboard twist ties to the plastic ones. And so it looks like we switched to the plastic ones, which are not, I don't like those as much because they're a lot more trash. Uh, I guess it was cheaper than the cardboard twist ties. So when I said before that the Hasbro Plastic Free Initiative wasn't about sustainability, it was about saving money, this is what I mean. Because I can't recycle these plastic twist ties. They're too, they're too small to go into my recycling bin. It literally, they'll all just fall out as soon as the bin is dumped, uh, you know, when the when the recycling collector comes by so like when it was the cardboard twist ties sure i could just toss those in because those were like big and thick and you know they would they would hold together but these are just too tiny so even though they are you know i guess uh maybe recyclable they're just going straight to the trash whereas before i was recycling a lot of the the cardboard twist ties so this is uh kind of going backwards and then we're going right back to the plastic window packaging like it never even happened and like yeah, I don't think this was ever about sustainability. This was simply about budget, and it backfired on them, and they're just kind of not going to do it anymore. All right, so here is the uh, steel core. So we got two of them. Uh, this is the uh, male one. Uh, it looks like the arms are beach heads. That reminds me a lot of beach heads because it's got that kind of uh, fabric design. It also still has the uh, visible pins, so that is, I think, the beach head arms. The guy looks really beefy because of the shoulder pad, which I think is really cool. Uh, gives him a unique look. He's not just like a, a skinny grunt. Uh, you can see he's got a nice uh, steel core logo on the shoulder, which is really, really cool. I love the little details like that when they put the uh, the symbols and the emblems on the figures. But yeah, I mean, he looks pretty nice. I think those are Duke's legs. So he's kind of like a, you know, a mixture of pre-existing parts. I think this chest is new. I know the head is new and the shoulder pads are definitely new. Um, that is a little wobbly, but that's kind of, you know, to be expected. So he looks pretty good. And then we have our female steel core, uh, which she looks nice. It's kind of cool because they do have kind of a uniform design to them, even though it is, you know, two different body molds. They do have that little like comm piece that like shows up on the sculpt of a lot of classified when they do the modern designs, like when they do new designs. Those show up. These legs, are these movie Scarlet's legs? Because they feel like it. They do have uh, the in inset pins, but she does have single jointed elbows. She could be using a lot for movie Scarlet, but I'd have to check later. It's not really something I'm that concerned about it right now. But that's the nice part about GHO is they do figure out how to reuse parts, but not make it look like they're reusing parts. Not like with, uh, say, like Marvel Legends. It's a little more obvious when they're reusing pieces uh, than with G.I. Joe Classified. So we're just going to stick them back there. Um, plus, you know, these characters debuted as toys, so it doesn't... It doesn't work out too bad when you reuse pieces for them. Okay, so that's that's a pile of stuff. And this is a pile of stuff. Okay, so yeah, there's just like a little bit too much to even just go over just in this little unboxing. Um, you can see here's the uh, backpack. It's got an American flag and a uh, you know a barcode. The uh, little jet trails are a little uh, 
warped, but you can put these on. You probably need a flight stand to get that looking anywhere uh, close to normal. I probably also need to heat those up and straighten them out because uh, that's the one thing I don't like is the, the bags for accessories. But I do think the cardboard tray was a good solution. Uh, we do get two extra heads. Uh, there is one that is slightly smaller than the other, so it goes with the other mold. But you can see they got kind of extra little visor thing. Um, we've got guns of different varieties here, which is uh, pretty cool. So we got like three three guns, a uh, couple pistols, a couple knives, a bunch of magazines, a silencer, and then just a ton of these blast effect things. So, I mean, there's a lot of stuff to do here. Uh, I'm gonna probably just do it off camera so that we can go look at some other figures. But uh, yeah, let's do it. I'll just cut away and, and armor these guys up a little bit. So there are the steel core. Uh, one thing to note, if you try to put the backpack on the female body mold, she does of course have the universal backpack connector, but because of the torso, it does stick out a little bit more than on the guys. So it may not feel as secure. You know, she can totally wear it. Uh, the one thing I did want to demonstrate though was uh if she will stand the thing i did want to demonstrate is if you have duke uh which you know duke's getting pretty old at this point but uh he does have that same backpack connector so if you wanted him doing like his movie uh backpack stuff you totally could um this will probably look even better on the uh the the classic duke that's coming out more so than the original classified but i still like this design i still like a lot of the original classified these guys feel more like in line with this duke than say like the 80s joes and i kind of dig that all right, let's look at another Joe with Tripwire, Aspara, and McLeod. Uh, they did name Aspara, his little rat, uh, little drone thing, McLeod. Um, this is a deluxe pack. This was also a Pulse exclusive, kind of like how Snowjob was, uh, which is just a thing they're doing. It makes sense. Like, the G.I. Joe classified line does well for Hasbro because they own the property full stock. They know they owe no money to nobody, uh, unlike every other brand, because even if they own Power Rangers and Transformers, they still own part of Transformers with Takara. They still own part of Power Rangers with Toei. With G.I. Joe, nobody nobody's fighting them on the rights to anything. The thing with G.I. Joe is they'll just make like anything because even if this line doesn't sell as well as like Marvel or Transformers or whatnot, like this this one gives them the most profits by far because they don't have to pay anything to use these characters. Then sometimes they'll just throw things on Pulse because it doesn't sell that well. Like in stores, I don't see classified clearing out, but online people are buying them. So it's it's kind of like the collector's action figure. It's the most collector's line of the Hasbro collector's lines. Anyways, he's got a nice head sculpt to him on Tripwire here. I like the uh, the bodysuit. It's all overlays, so if you wanted to cut any of that off and use his body for something else, you totally could. Shoulders, oh, his shoulders aren't restrictive. They're just a little stiff. Yeah, and because that moves, you can get full hips if you want. But anyways, over here, he's got a big old uh, accessory locker. Because he's got, well, it's not even a full accessory locker. I don't know why it's that big then. There's all his stuff. Uh, I do think I'll miss the accessory lockers most of all. All right. Whoa, that is a ton of stuff he comes with. Let's see, what do we got here? They kind of don't give you tutorials on this. So he's got another bomb vest. He comes with two bomb vests. Oh, I see. This one's kind of different. So this one's got kind of shoulder things. I guess this does come off. You don't have to cut it off. It, is it just pegged in? Yeah, it's just pegged in. So you can swap out and give him a different look on his bomb vest. I don't know the differences between that. I'm not a munitions expert. Uh, let's see. This is his weapon. Not a weapon. This is a bomb probe, right? I don't... Again, I don't know the terms to these things. It just looks cool. Uh, it looks like he's got a remote control for uh, his little bomb scout, McLeod. Uh, this, is this like the, the neck piece? These are helmets. So you got two helmets for them. So the first helmet, probably like your more vintage 80s tripwire helmet. That looks more like your like traditional tripwire look, right? And then this is like kind of the more realistic look. Um, like if you're doing bomb squad stuff, I wouldn't leave part of your face exposed. That's just me. You know, again, not a munitions expert, but if there was a chance something could explode, I would want that. I would want that, and I'd want that hood piece around as well. Just to really make sure that if something does go off, you can increase your chances of survival. That looks a little off and weird, but I think that's how it's supposed to work. I don't know. They don't give us instructions. Oh, there's a smaller... Is this a smaller collar piece? Because I think I like that better. This looks like a smaller one that goes around the back of his neck, and then that way the helmet goes down, and then that covers the back of his neck. Yeah, that makes... That works a lot better. I like that. I like that a lot. So then other accessory wise, this is his backpack. And then this is the little hose thing that plugs in here. And then that plugs, does it plug into, yeah, it plugs into the back of this. So that way we can get his, his bomb scanning equipment, his whatever it is. Again, I don't work in munitions. I don't know why I keep apologizing for that. I think it's pretty obvious I'm like full-time YouTuber 
less so munition squad. And I don't have a secret history where I was like a munition squad guy. And I think they've made that very clear by me going, oh, what does any of this do? Uh, he does come with a pistol. Uh, the pistol actually has a port for blast effect, which is nice. On the uh, steel core guys, they uh, they don't have blast effect ports for their pistols, but there you go. And then it uh, looks like McLeod here needs some wheels attached. Are those bombs? Okay, so there's McLeod. He's a little, uh, little bomb scout thing. So I guess these are like mines he can pick up. And then here's Aspara. As far as a, a bomb rat for sniffing out bombs, that's pretty neat. So I guess you could kind of have him posed where he's ready to dispose the bombs, and these are like the bombs he's disposing of. Um, or you can have him place the bombs. That's an option. So we can have him hold the controller like that. Oh, do these go in the backpack? Oh, I'm I'm unobservant. I think he's supposed to have bombs ready to load. How does that come out of there though? Because that like, I, does that come out? That's a solid hunk of plastic. That may have just, now I guess you can kind of pull on it. So if you want to have them controlling McLeod, you can pretend McLeod has like sentience, uh, you know, you got options. Anyways, he's posable. That's pretty cool. Yeah, this is, uh, this is kind of neat. I like that there are different jobs within the GI Joe team. It's not just all like infantrymen like this guy's like i will deal with bomb stuff uh, i like that you also get like two different looks for him in the same box again other lines would have a deluxe figure that's like look it comes with a few extra things or it's a unique mold this one's like look at all the stuff you get for a guy named tripwire and for him being pulse exclusive it makes total sense he's not that exciting of a character all right, so here's the Snow Serpent. Uh, he's either fan channel or retail. I don't know if there's a difference. Uh, I did comment on the last one where I was like, why is Snow Job Pulse exclusive and the Snow Serpent retail? Why are they not both retail? You know what? I got to give it credit, though. Like, this is probably the cooler design. I think my friend Fighter Cow said it best. He's like, why are you telling us not to root for the bad guys? Or why would no? Why would you say no one's going to join Cobra when they look this rad? Uh, yeah, it's just a thing, you know? Uh, oh, hey, we're back to the cardboard types. Probably, actually, did, did he come out? before those other two i don't remember what order these came in stuff came in so quick around here like it's just been a flood of gi joe and cobra like left and right like for the last month and it's just it's just it's just about keeping my head above water and staying up with it and even then i'm still a few figures behind because i was like well i don't need to worry about the retail wave but yeah see these can go in my recycling bin i like these better uh, i wish hasbro would keep those around even with the window packaging here is uh mr snow serpent so snow serpent is a vintage 80s design uh but this is kind of like a modern take on it i like that he's got branding uh so you see he's got kind of like this arctic mission sort of logo to him which is really cool in addition to the cobra one i really like that and i love how intricately detailed these figures are on top of that uh he does have the same system that snow job had where he's got like the upper torso ball joint instead of a straight ab crunch, which is fine because he's got all this stuff on him. I'm looking over at Snowjob, and you know, I probably should bring him in. I think he reuses Snowjob's legs. Yep, legs, uh, arms, except for the lower arm part where it's got like the, the fur added here. You know, from a budget standpoint, it makes sense. From a stylistic standpoint, who cares? Like, they look good. Let's get his big old box of stuff out. I don't know, he comes with cooler stuff than Snowjob, right? Like, that's the... That's the reason he's retail or fan channel, or is there a difference? Uh, he's got this sick ass uh, wolf cape and hat, which is just, they were like, yeah, that needs its own bag. Uh, they decided to just like, what if the, the Cobra Snow Serpents have been like hunting wolves or something? I don't know. They like, this looks cool. And yeah, it does. It looks like this guy is just like a total badass out in the snow, just like hunting down wolves just for fun. Cause it's like, he's, he's covered for warmth. He doesn't need that for warmth. He needs that to look cool. Uh, let's get the rest of his stuff here. So, oh my God, that's a lot of stuff. Just the pile. Every figure is just like, boom, pile. Uh, so he does come with the same snowshoes that Snowjob had, which is nice. This is the cool part. So this is the part that they had like a photo of him doing like a flip. And that was when, uh, that was when Fighter Cows was like, yeah, no, if he's, if he's supposed to be a bad guy, why does he look this cool? So he's got a freaking snowboard. Snowjob just had the skis. This is a snowboard. I love it. That's freaking cool. We're going to put him on that later. Uh, he's got a pistol, and this is a new pistol mold, I think, because it's got the, it's like the modern style pistol, but it's got the hole for the blast effects, which is nice. Let's get that in his holster. Uh, he's not taking the cape off, by the way. That is staying on. We are keeping the cape, even if it's not practical. Oh, he's got two pistols. That's right. He's got two pistols there, which is kind of cool. We don't usually get two pistols and holsters. We usually only get one, uh, which is kind of, so it's kind of different. Uh, we've also got this 
this weapon, which I think this is the magazine for that. So there's that. And then we got this one, which got a magazine here as well. So that's that's pretty cool. And then let's see, what's this? This is a knife. I say, what's this? That's like the one thing I can identify as a knife, but I don't see a holster for the knife. Usually, usually with the small knives, like they can, they can holster them, but I guess not on this guy. That's weird. That's unusual. I haven't seen that happen before. Uh, so that's, well, that's different. All right, well, we're getting his wolf stuff back on. Yeah, usually don't include the small knife unless it can go somewhere. This is as he checks to make sure he's not missing a holster or something. Nope. Oh, yeah, this backpack looks like a variation of Bazooka's backpack where it can load uh, the missiles. What direction are they going? There we go. You can load the four Bazooka missiles here, which is kind of like, yeah, Bazooka came with... I don't know if he has the same backpack or just a similar one. Oh, no, this is the exact same one as Bazooka, because you can hold... You can store the bazooka on the bottom of the missile rack for the bazooka. That's the idea there. But I'm wondering if you can also hook the snowshoe. Yeah, you can. Totally can. Oh, I see what they did. Those aren't the exact same as snow jobs. Snow jobs snowshoes come to a point. These have an extra thing added so they can hook to this backpack. So what's a similar mold? They added the top part. So it's, it's similar, but not the exact same. So that way you can actually hook them to this backpack that already existed. That's Super clever. Uh, they also, <laughs> I was wondering, they also have a backpack hole in the cape. So you can plug that on top of the cape. And then we've got the bazooka itself here, which you can uh, you can plug this part on. This part swivels out so that way you can push the, the missiles through. So if you want to have them hold, I don't think he can hold everything. He's got like one too many guns. He's got this, you know, he's got three guns. And oh wait, this got a shoulder strap. Let's see. I just want to see if we can put all of his stuff on him all at once, even if it looks ridiculous, because I don't think I'm actually going to pose him like this. All right, so gun A in that hand, gun B in this hand, and then uh, oh, he's got goggles for some reason. He already has goggles. You didn't need to also give him goggles for his goggles, but we got goggles on goggles, and then we're going to put this around his head like that. We're gonna get this backpack in place. It doesn't stay very well on the back of the wolf cape. And then what do we do with the small knife? Because like, you know, we can put the snowboard on them. Where do we put the small knife, guys? Can we just stick it in the bandolier like that and say, yay, he can hold all of his crazy amount of accessories on him all at once. Congrats, Snow Serpent. You win the prize of getting a different pose looks less chaotic than that. There we go. You can just tell this guy's a big trash talker. Like he's just sliding in and he's like, hey, snow job, you just got skis. I got a snowboard and a wolf cape. And yeah, I have to agree with them. Like, uh, snow job is cool. Iconic, classic G.I. Joe, heroic guy. You know, awesome dude. Uh, this guy is 100% uh, more rad. And uh, I think I like him more. But we need to get more snow joes because we have the Arctic, uh, the snow serpent here and the Arctic bat. We need like another snow joe, uh, unless you count Arctic mission Storm Shadow because he kind of looks like when Storm Shadow joined the joes. So now we're gonna look at the Walmart exclusives for the year that weren't retro carded. Cause Walmart was doing these retro card shows. Now they got regular classified stuff. So, you know, that that's a bummer if your Walmart's bad stock and stuff. However, I will give Walmart credit. Uh, I had pre-ordered the Range Viper. I even ordered two of them and they shipped my order. Uh, I ordered them the day they went up for pre-order and they actually came through and shipped them. Uh, the way that the Walmart line is going is there's a little sub story. So like with Target, we got Python Patrol versus Tiger Force. With Walmart, there's this dark Energon storyline going on. And when we saw the Range Viper, we didn't think much of it. It was just like, oh, you know, purple crystals. They have confirmed it's dark Energon from Transformers. So there's definitely some overlap going on here uh, between the brands, which is really cool. But essentially Cobra's investigating a dark Energon mod and the G.I. Joe team sent in Night Force, which is a subset of the original toy line, uh, and Night Force is to investigate the Cobra operations. So what they've done here is they kind of give you, you know, each wave is essentially a Night Force version of a Joe we haven't gotten, a new Cobra, and then starting with the second wave going into the third one, they're also including a crimson variant of a Cobra. So we'll look at all this. Of course, I got the first two waves here, um, but I did get these from Walmart. I got Big Ben and the Range Vipers from them. And so credit to Walmart. They actually shipped my pre-orders. Uh, they didn't even delay them. They actually shipped them early. And uh, that's better than I can say for Target, who shipped like three out of seven pre-orders this year. So let's take a look. Uh, there is Mr. Range Viper, and here's his box. Uh, it's nice to look at a normal sized figure. Yay, cardboard ties, my favorites. Uh, I don't like, I didn't like the plastic ties. So here's the uh, Range Viper. So he's new because we haven't gotten Range Vipers before. Uh, this is kind of our standard colors 
you know, basically. It's like, he is not a 100% new figure. There is some reused stuff here. I don't really feel like comparing to what is reused from what, but this skull head is like the coolest thing ever. Look at that. That's amazing. It's got like this brain look to it and a skull face. Yeah, these look so cool, and that's why I had to get two of them. <laughs> I think it was, this was the... I think I ordered two Cobra Valkyries after this, but I think I think this is the last time I'm getting two of an army builder. And it's because they're repainting them so often, I don't feel like I need to uh, buy multiples anymore. Uh, the backpack was nice and put in cardboard, thank you. That kept the top part from getting all messed up. So he's got like an artillery backpack, basically, that also has communication stuff, because he's supposed to be like a sniper range guy. Uh, that sort of thing. Here's here's a look at all this stuff. So we've got, you know, big old grenade launcher gun, which actually has a spinning barrel inside. That's pretty cool. He's got like a little knife there. Uh, looks like a scarf. I like scarves. Scarves are cool. Uh, he's got a pistol and then he's got an axe. That's actually, surprisingly, that's not barbecue's axe. And then he's got the magazine clip for this gun. All right, that's right. So you clip this part here on the bottom and then from there, it'll roll the uh, the bullet casings into, or the bullets into the, the barrel there. So it's like an auto-loading kind of thing, which looks really, really cool. And then on the back here, there's a little section cut out. I don't know if that's supposed to hold. Oh, it holds that. That's awesome, because I'm not going to have him hold that. So you can just fit that in there for his backpack. And then he comes with a uh, bandolier of bullets. I like when they go extra with these. Okay, so this is going to go... In the holster, this will go around his neck like that. This will go around the body. So we got that goes around the body. It's been so many months since I pre-ordered this guy. I kind of forgot like some of the design details. There's that. Uh, what do we do with the axe? Does the axe not have a holster? Or is there a holster on the backpack? Because that axe, it looks cool, but I don't think it actually has a holstered part. So we'll just plug this in here, this, and then let's uh, let's range him up. Let's give him some ranged weaponry on this range of Viper. Awesome. That looks amazing. And then we could also add the, uh, we just have him hold the axe, right? We don't have to store the axe. Oh, that's right. The backpack that I forgot the little thing up here. Uh, it actually plugs into the back of his head. That is sort of demented, but I kind of love it. Uh, so that plugs into the back of the net. You can totally leave it out of there. I kind of like that they're a little bit like remote controlled. Like they're like battle droids from Star Wars, except like Cobra dudes who are like under mind control or something. I dig that. I dig that a lot. Um, he looks so cool. Uh, this is just like one of the coolest designs that I've seen on a Cobra, and I'm glad I got two of them. Uh, and I'm also glad they're repainting them into a bunch of different colors, because I think, you know, that's going to be how I build an army. Range Viper is awesome. All right, next up we have Night Force Big Ben. Uh, shout out to everybody in the UK who wanted Big Ben and Pulse kind of screwed it up because these aren't available over there except as Pulse exclusives, and then they sold out super quick on the, the Pulse UK side. Hopefully, and I do mean hopefully, Big Ben's just in a normal wave. Because uh, it sucks not only when you can't get a figure, but it also sucks when that figure is from your country. Hasbro, you gotta get better at that. All right, so there's his little accessory tray. Here's Big Ben. I'm sure we'll get a normal one, like a non-Night Force Big Ben. I'm pretty sure, you know, anytime they do like a, a Tiger Force version of something or a, or a Night Force version of something, like we'll, we'll see the normal version of that Joe later on, right? I say that, but you know, there's there's some we haven't seen yet. I know with Rakondo, they said Rakondo is going to be on a vintage card for like normal Rakondo. And I wouldn't be surprised if that's just like the case going forward. Like we'll see Big Ben in non-Night Force colors, but he'll be like on a retro card. He's, he's cool. I like his his bullet things it's kind of funny he shipped with the range viper and they kind of got like a similar vibe going on it's just like one's evil uh so that's pretty cool but i love i love the way this looks this looks great he's got the uh he's got the flag there which is nice he's got his other uh symbol oh, what's that symbol for i have no idea anyways it's pretty cool he does have the uh modern joe style combat which i like i like when they have that accessories let's take a look so he's got an extra head, uh, which this is interesting. He's got a head with a neck attached. Huh, I don't know exactly how that's going to go on because I think you have to remove the neck and the head. But this is a gas mask head, which is really cool. We've got a big old, this is a big old blaster and a big old magazine clip for it, uh, which goes on right there. Also looking really cool. You can plug the... Uh, the magazine clip on that. There is a silencer, not for this, but for the uh, submachine. It's not a pistol. He's going to carry it like a pistol, but there's that. So you got those options. That is the only thing that holsters on him, I think, is that. That holster's here. This holster's right here. And then everything else he's got to carry. And he doesn't have a backpack. Yeah, so he doesn't have a backpack or anything. So he's just going to hold these. Let's see if we can swap this head because I'm curious. 
Oh, okay. So for some reason, even though I gave it the normal amount of force, it didn't really pull the head. Like even though this is fully articulated, right? Like a normal figure, it did pull the neck out. So maybe that was designed have a little bit more grip, but there is the gas mask. You don't get two joints at the neck here, but you still do get like a normal ball joint down there. That looks cool. Uh, I think, you know, if you're army building or something and you want like somebody with a gas mask, that's pretty cool. Uh, for me, I do want Big Ben's like distinctive tiger. It's funny they didn't do a tiger force with the way his like tiger stripe face looks. I kind of want that for Big Ben. He's going on a covert mission. Doesn't mean he has to be stealthy. But yeah, I mean, it's pretty cool they made Big Ben this early in the line. He's like not like a super prominent Joe. And I think it also helps that he is Walmart exclusive. Like with any of the exclusives, if they're going to be exclusive, at least let it be something that's not well known uh, or can be repainted easily, you know, so there's there he is i mean he looks great i think he's terrific uh i'll buy him again when he's in normal colors you know like if you want to just wait for normal color big ben that's probably happening i mean there's no guarantee in anything in life but they probably have plans for that since they made the night force version Okay, so in the second wave, we got Night Force Shooter. All right, so Shooter has an interesting story. Uh, she was technically in the original G.I. Joe number one from Marvel. There was like a, a roster screen for G.I. Joe, and there was a character named Shooter. And that was named for uh, then Marvel editor-in-chief Jim Shooter. And they just kind of like slipped it in as a little homage thing. Uh, the thing was is that they never actually showed Shooter. And then in the, uh, I think it was the Devil's Due Publishing, G.I. Joe Comics, they gave a character named Shooter. And like it was a woman with, uh, you know, targeting skills. And it's great because G.I. Joe ultimately does not have enough women in it. And so anytime you can add them is great. And I think it's really cool that we got a Night Force version of Shooter. I don't know if she even had a toy because I can't remember off offhand. Uh, but her Night Force version here is pretty cool. And then we will of course hopefully see a regular color as well it looks like she does have the gas mask head as like the default option which i like that the night force they're going into a tunnel with this mysterious substance the dark energon crystals and they're not going in like you know only with the the face open thing like you have the option of gas mask heads and again that leads to the storytelling i think that's one of the coolest things about classified is they're taking into consideration the figures they're releasing like you know in a lot of ways the walmart line you know has a story and narrative to it that's more than just oh hey we had an excuse to put stuff out kind of like what they were doing with cobra island in the first year but it's just kind of better executed because you get specific accessories like this like maybe regular shooter won't have the gas mask or something like that and maybe she'll come with something else let's take a look uh, of course her accessories are going to be uh, long range weaponry because she is like a sniper for a gi joe uh, i remember this when they revealed her she has swappable hair pieces instead of swappable heads. So this is a hair piece. And that's really clever too. That could have been an extra head, but they molded the gas mask to a hair piece. So you can just pull that off. Then you can give her uh, this as one hair option with like a little tied up in the back, or you can give her kind of like a straight, long haired, more braided look. I'm sure those are references to things, but uh, you know, my G.I. Joe knowledge, I've read all 300 issues of the original uh, Larry Hama G.I. Joe comic from the Marvel days all the way to the IDW days. And I've watched, you know, like almost every animated show. But when you start getting into the Devil's Due publishing characters, I've never read those, uh, never had the chance. And so um, I don't know them as well. Standard loadout of like, she's got a pistol, boom. She's got a, a knife, fits up there. And then she's got whatever that is. I think this is the holster for her, her sniper rifle. And then she's got a magazine for that. So it looks like, oh, it's taped down. So this has got inside her rifle, which is kept mostly straight by that card which is nice so let's get the uh, magazine clip in here you know for me personally i don't i don't care if the magazine clips are removable but that was a change people wanted and that was a change they implemented and so then what you can do here is clip this like this and then now you can store it on her back so if you wanted her kind of like she can carry all of her accessories except for her, her hair there uh, also i like the detail of the tattoo again really cool that they can get something that intricate without it making it look like complete wash which when they first started doing tattoos on figures in this line not so not so clean but they've gotten much better uh these elbows these arms look really thin because that's is the mold that they're using what i like about it is the fact that she does have you know the the range to hold the one weapon she's like known for which is really cool so there we go uh we can get that kind of squared away there it does have a blast effect piece at the end or a blast effect port at the end so if you do want to put a blast effect on her weapon you can totally do that uh now she may not be firing this thing just like standing like this she would probably be crouched down so that the, you know, the recoil goes into the ground or however snipers work. But I think that looks really cool. Again, I like the gas mask uh, storytelling element. I'm not a fan of this hair. I like this look for her. 
And I, I look forward to her getting like normal colors later. She's super cool. So next is the Crimson Alley Viper. The Crimson stuff was interesting because when they first started doing it, I thought it was kind of neat. Oh, we did a Crimson Bat. And then I started realizing they're repainting all the things into Crimson colors. So I'm like, oh, okay, this is another subset like Night Force. What kind of feels like storytelling wise is that the Crimson Squad was sent in after Joe. So like the first wave is like Range Vipers and Big Ben. So Big Ben goes in there. Maybe Shooter came with them at that time. And they kind of like, you know, they went and did their thing. And then Cobra's like oh no you know gi joe's found out about our dark energon mining we need to uh we need to get in there with some stronger troops and so they send in the uh, crimson strike force i'm calling them crimson strike force because that's what they uh i think that's what the baroness uh set was called the crimson strike team or something but essentially like they're sending in these repaints uh or these these cobra troops that have the specialties but they are part of the uh, crimson division so they would be under uh tomac zaymont and baroness's uh decision making uh so it's pretty cool I like that it's not just a full red alley viper. I like that it's just like the torso and then the rest of the body is kind of this gray look with like the hazard stripes because he is going into a hazardous situation. And again, I like that there's no like exposed skin going on as much with him. Uh, we can put, of course, the iconic visor. And what's cool about that, you can actually see on the visor there is a hazard symbol. So like this guy is, you know, he's specializing in hazardous waste and stuff, which I think is really cool. Uh, it comes with a ton of weapons. That gun got bent. Uh, that gun also got a little bent. Uh, we're going to give him this one, I think. Let's pop the uh, magazine. Does this one need a magazine clip? Yeah, just pop the magazine clip on. Uh, I like the Alley Viper mold a lot. Uh, it looks pretty nice. I like the giant shield. The giant shield is kind of like my favorite. This is one of those characters I felt like I didn't need to be buying as many of the army builders because I bought three Alley Vipers. I bought three bats and then they've repainted the Alley Viper. This is the first Alley Viper repaint, but they repainted the bat so many times. Like I didn't need to buy as many of the base one. We're just going to put all this aside. We're just going to give them this one. It's nice to see the Alley Viper kind of getting the same treatment, uh, but it's definitely making me go like, yeah, I probably didn't need to buy so many uh, Alley Vipers out the gate. Like I probably could have waited, but at the time the line was, you know, kind of like it was struggling because of the Snake Eyes movie and like the way Cobra Island went and stuff, but it, it really recovered. Uh, there's the uh, there's the interior, so you can see the display readout. I like that we're at a point where it's like, yeah, we can do like a Crimson Alley Viper. And sure, it's Walmart exclusive. Yeah, that's fine. It's an it's a variant. I don't mind when variants are Walmart exclusive. I'm a little annoyed that like the Range Viper or like Shadow Trackers like base colors are like Walmart exclusive. Like that, I feel like that was kind of stepping over a line a little bit. You know, I did get, I, I should have mentioned, I did get way two from Pulse. I didn't get them from Walmart. Uh, Pulse shipped them out on time. I, you know, getting them on Hasbro Pulse seems a little nicer. Same with the Target exclusives. Sounds like Walmart did a good job shipping these. That's Crimson Alley Viper. He looks, he looks nice. He's going to look good with all the other Crimson stuff. All right, so our last figure we're going to look at today is the Cobra Mole Rat, which, if I'm not mistaken, is a completely new character for Classified and for specifically this storyline. Because the Mole Rats are described as being the guys going in to investigate the Dark Energon. And the story goes, they go in, they're investigating it, and then they start getting affected by it, and that's what causes Cobra to have to ramp up operations. And that's also what gets the attention of G.I. Joe. And you can start to see why this might be a cool figure uh, when we're looking at it there. And this is where we found out that it was Dark Energon that was going on. We saw the purple crystals in the Range Viper and, and Big Ben box art, but we didn't quite get the, oh, it's Dark Energon until they revealed this guy. And around that time was when we finally found out that Skybound Entertainment was doing the new uh, Transformers and G.I. Joe comics and that they would be in a shared universe known as the Energon universe. So it kind of feels like a nice coordinated little soft sell uh, sort of experience going on. Anyways, he does probably have like a mixture of new and reused parts. It's not like a huge deal like always. But yeah, this is what's happening to the poor guys that were investigating the Dark Energon for Cobra. They are getting infected by Dark Energon and that is the coolest thing ever. All right, so his stuff is pretty interesting because he's not like a combative sort of character. Uh, I didn't want to army build this guy. Not that there's going to be like a ton of repaints of this one. It might not be, but you never know. Like maybe like, you know, the next wave of the Walmart schools is suddenly there's like a infected one that's like full dark energon. I just, you know, I'm not doing the army builder and it's exclusive. So, you know, if I'm buying less of them than, than other people have a chance at, at getting them. So he's got like a lantern uh, or not a lantern. It looks like a lantern, but I think it's actually a can, can, canister for holding dark energon because it's got like, it's, you know, it's got the purple energy in it. Uh, we've got this thing which is like a looks like a meter uh the drill would be to you know mine the dark energon this is uh the handle 
for the power drill. There you go. So that, that goes together. And then, oh, I see. So this is like the handle. You can do a power drill on this handle, or you can do this, uh, looks like it look more like a firing weapon, like a either defensive or like a, a rivet thing. I'm gonna give him the drill. This guy's, this guy's a worker that had a bad day. He also comes with what he looked like prior. Uh, so what's cool here is you can pop this off. This is kind of like what the mole rat should look like. You know, guy doing his job, working through the mines. You can uh, plug this little hose piece on here, and then you can just plug that on. And so it's like, there's your like normal mole rat guy. You get his backpack, that plugs into the side here as well. So it's like, you know, he's just having... He's having his good day. You know, he's mining some dark energy on. He's looking for it. He's got his, his drill in place. I don't think he really stores anything. This will store on the back well. Oh, that handle moves. Look at that. That's neat. Uh, you can hold this so he's like, he's carrying the dark energy on. He's having a good time. You know, sure, he works for an evil organization, but whatever. You know, he's 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 doing his job, right? He's getting his job done. And then and then he's carrying that dark energy on a little too long and then suddenly bursts out into zombie mode and you're like, ah, and then you can put this on. I kind of like the uh, the hoses just hanging there detached. It's uh, it's really creepy. And then it's like, er, now he's going to like start fighting people because he's all dark energy on possessed. And like, oh, you should just you should give him zombie proportions. Like if you can't, oh, oh, it is action figures. We can just kind of twist his, his body around and just be like, yeah, so you can have something like that. Just kind of like he's he's not full zombie, but he's not what he used to be. So this was a fun selection of figures. We got quite a few Joes. Uh, the line gets very Cobra heavy at times, so it's nice to see a lot of variety in the Joes as well, between the Steel Core and then the Night Force guys, and of course Tripwire. And then over here on the Cobra side, we just got that really cool Dark Energon stuff. I like the way they look together, but I just, I like this whole Dark Energon tunnel thing. And then like I said, the Snow Serpent is just the coolest dude ever. I love this line. It's so much fun. You don't have to have any character attachment to any of these just to enjoy good designs and good figures. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed looking at these with me. Like I said, we'll do more of these. I've got other figures sitting here. If you enjoyed this, hit the like button, hit subscribe and the notification bell. Leave a comment down below. Tell me if you want to see more unboxings like this. The reception to the first one was so positive and that was just a spur of the moment idea. So hey, we'll keep doing them if you guys like to see them. Also, uh, if you want to help support the channel directly, consider becoming a channel member for as low as $1 a month. Details in the join button down below. You can also check out our live streams here on the channel Mondays at 5 p.m. Eastern for all G.I. Joe Classified series news and discussion. Plus, you can check out the Discord protocol in the link below to join our Discord server discussing toys, action figures, all kinds of fun stuff. You can find me on social media at Soundout12 if you so wish. And you can find my awesome graphic designer on social media and Discord at DarkClass643. Plus, you can find Hero Club at HeroClub.com for comic book news, reviews, and more. Till next time, this is Soundout saying, Yo, Joe!